Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your mid-month tarot check for April 2020 for all Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I want to thank all of you so much for subscribing, watching my videos, commenting, liking, and sharing. I really appreciate that. And if you are new to my channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and hit the bell if you want to be notified when new videos are posted, which is about every week. So last week I did a reading on the pandemic and it reminds me the cards do not lie, okay? These cards offer, uh, they offer clarity for sure and um, somebody had asked, actually more than one person had asked if i do it and then I just finally was inspired to do it. So it's up and then I'm also going to be doing a season, seasonal tarot check which will cover the months of May, June, July, and August. So that'll be coming up next week. So for now, here we go. This is for Scorpio, and it is a mid-month tarot check for April 2020 for Scorpio. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. All right, your present position is the Ten of Pentacles, and the immediate influence is the Three of Wands. Your destiny here is the Eight of Swords, the more distant past, the Queen of Wands, more recent past, the Four of Swords. Coming towards you, you have the Hermit. You're represented here by the Hierophant, and the person around you is the King of Wands. Your hopes here are the Two of Wands, and then the outcome's the Chariot. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Seven of Pentacles here. So, yeah, interesting reading here. So you have fire energy, you have earth, you have air, you have Taurus, you have Virgo, you have Cancer. Um, yeah, you have, you know, something going on here. It's very, you have a lot of very slow moving energy until the very end. Okay, so right now you've got a hint of progress here with the wealth card. The three of wands is a hint of progress. It's forward moving. Um, and it's sort of like you're embarking on something new, but there's still time to turn back if it doesn't suit you. However, with the Ten of Pentacles, that's the wealth card and it's wealth for everyone. It's harmony. Um, so for some of you, I feel like you have a new opportunity and it may be a new, a new love interest, um, but I also think for some of you, you've got something new with work because you've got a lot of Pentacles here, but it's like it's not, there's not a lot of speed to it. Like I said, until I think until probably May, it'll really pick up and um, for now, it's going to involve having a very good attitude, you know, keep a very good attitude about you, know that you are on the right path, know that the universe always has you, you know, and I said this in my pandemic reading, but the, the key really to the dark night of the soul, um, and not that I'm saying you're in that, but for those of you that are familiar with that concept, um, I think we're in a global dark night of the soul. We're coming out of it. I think we're getting into the night of the spirit right now. And with that, the key to it is self-knowledge. Because when you know yourself, you know the universe. So that's your key to manifest this ten of pentacles. Because who doesn't want that? I mean, it's one of the most fabulous cards in the entire deck. And you have it. So that's the energy. So the only thing that can really hold you back is your thinking because your thoughts become things. And if you have a vibration of an eight of swords, that can really hold you back. I also think for some of you, this is a destiny card, which means I think for some of you, you were kind of born into some contrast where you had a difficult childhood and it's time to lay down those swords and walk through it and, and leave it behind you. Because, you know, the, the main thing I, for people when we look at them and say why don't people want to heal why don't they choose that for themselves and it's being afraid of their own power being afraid of being whole and you know to some extent losing some of that woundedness that they've adopted as their identity but it's not it really isn't truly their identity so it's time for you if you've had some really some damage from the past to let that go you know, to know that those things, here's the most powerful thing too, those are things that happen to you. They are not who you are. They are not. They're things that happen to you and you can walk free from them. You really can. 
Um, in the more distant past, you have the Queen of Wands here. And I do think, in, you know, this is probably from like a year or more ago, there was a time of, it was like great, you were in flow. There was a time of great stability, taking action. Things were just coming into alignment. And I think that they were in such a good place that when a lot of things happened that have basically shut down the world, it's like, what the hell? I was just getting things on track. And now this, and you know, that's, that's not quite to the level of the dark night of the soul, but it's got kind of a similar flavor where, you know, you devote your whole life to something, you do what you think are all the right things, and then you can develop this sort of favoritism from the universe. But the thing is, the universe doesn't discriminate. It reads vibration. So it's a very impartial universe. It reads it really is not personal, quite frankly. It really just reads what you're putting out there and then matches it. And unfortunately, in our collective, we've had a lot of negativity. So whether you personally contributed or not, we're just part of a collective consciousness that's done that. And it caused things to stop on a dime. But, you know, this was a time in the more recent past of going within a time of solitude. And it actually can really... You're, you're getting more of it, too, with the hermit, by the way. You're still kind of in this where it's a time of solitude, a time of, you know, learning about yourself, um, possibly going to a therapist, um, and, you know, learning how to be integrous, how to be true to yourself, and not allow anybody to lead you away from that. Because that's the thing, when we stop being true to ourselves, that's when we really start to attract things that we generally don't like in our physical plane. So you do have this Virgo energy coming towards you. And so if you know that there's a predominant Virgo in your life, like somebody at work, or um, you know, if you do have some kind of a love interest that shows up, this certainly could be them. But you still have, there's just still not a lot of action here. It's still about, you know, learning more about yourself, more self-knowledge, but it's a nine. So this is coming to a conclusion sooner than later because this is a very different energy than the outcome, which is the chariot. I do feel like there's still some value in meditation, quieting your mind, preparing yourself. And you're, you know, when, when, when you can fully do that, you're going to be blown away by the things that come towards you. You have, like I said, this forward-moving energy as we get into this next row of cards that builds great momentum. I do think that you have a very stable commitment coming towards you. Um, certainly could be with a fire sign. Um, this, is this is Taurus energy, but this actually represents you. It can also be about higher education. I do feel like for some of you, you might be taking some kind of extra classes or even doing something online where you are fulfilling some kind of a role, like um, kind of a side hustle, where you got some kind of an opportunity sent to you to, to do something virtually where they're looking for people who can have a certain license or something like that. Um, but I actually do think, though, for those of you that are interested in a relationship, this is a marriage relationship. This is a long-term commitment. This is all about, again, the Hierophant holds up his hand saying, be still. Okay, so this is your guidance just to kind of be calm, be still, be tranquil, be centered. And what comes towards you, again, this is fire energy, is this king of wands. And this, this energy knows what they want. This is somebody who is, comes in and sweeps you off your feet. This is somebody who knows how to pull out all the stops. They're not going to mess around. They're mature and they are in it for keeps. This is, like I said, a long-term commitment that you have coming towards you. And if you've been dating somebody and they've been kind of in and out um, energy, you also have the queen of wands too. I guess I mentioned that earlier. So you have the king and queen that are almost in the identical spot in the reading um, across from each other in the reading. So you have this power couple and they're dynamic. They're very attractive. But again, they're always kind of looking for new opportunities, expansion. It's like they really complement each other. Um, they are—they make a lot of sense together. I feel like whoever it is that will be coming towards you, 
they're going to be a great fit with you. Um, you know, again, this is somebody who knows how to treat another person, knows how to um, be in a relationship, be mature in the relationship, show love, but also how to have a good time and how to be very nurturing too. Um, just a very creative partner. So, you know, your hopes and fears in this, it's all about decisions. And I think the main thing with you is m wanting to make sure that you make the right decision and making sure that if you get into a commitment, especially for some of you, I think you've been single for a while, and there's sort of this feeling like, you know, I'm done playing around and playing it small. I really want the real deal now. And I think too, with that 10 of Pentacles, you've got the right energy. You know, if like I said, you recently met someone and there's kind of a hint of progress, um, you know, taking it to the next level will, will come, it will manifest because you have this chariot card here. Again, this is cancer energy. And the the chariot, the chariot moves forward, right? It's like, you know, he's on this chariot being guided and led through this, you know, beautiful city. And you won't be stopped here. So with the chariot, this is the universe bringing in sort of that push, that energetic push to move you forward. Um, and this is where you obtain your goals in life. You know, this is all about moving forward with balance and stability. So I feel like for you, you the guidance here is to take a leap of faith and it's all going to work out. Um, again, about meeting someone new or having somebody new. It's just a very nurturing, positive card, though. Um, you're in flow and you're definitely on a path to you know, leading to that culmination of what do I really want, you know, so being very clear on that. And I do think for some of you, you're contemplative about it. This would be a great time to do a vision board to be making lists of appreciation, positive aspects, really looking at those things, because when you are in the vibration of appreciation, you are on that frequency of love and attainment. You, I, I can tell you, I've done it myself where when I, I didn't necessarily have a lot of financial resources. I was, you know, I I told the story in a different video, but I had my first house and it was a modest house. I was very young. I was just 23, just turned 23. And I was um, just kind of mesmerized by, wow, this is my house. I bought this house. And from that, I then manifested a bigger house, but I loved that house. I took great care of it. I, you know, you know, it meant a lot to me. And the universe feels that vibration and then I very easily, you know, build a house and I was still quite young when that happened. So, um, when you look around and are in that appreciation and kind of take a look at the landscape, but see all the good things around you, more will be brought to you. This is an Abraham Hicks money in the law of attraction card. Appreciation and gratitude are different vibrational states. When you feel gratitude, often you are looking at a difficulty that you have overcome, but there is still some of that struggle vibration present. The state of appreciation is seeing whatever you are looking at through the eyes of source. You could walk down a crowded street with all kinds of things that a lot of other people would find reason to criticize or worry about, and you would not have access to them because your vibration of appreciation is picking out for you things of a different vibrational nature. So, yes, when we are looking at appreciation, when we feel that appreciation, more things are brought to us to appreciate. This is a Whispers of Love Oracle card. Physical touch, a tender touch can mean so much. So that can be very difficult during this time when we're a lot of people are in a stay-at-home order. But I do feel like what that could mean for you with a relationship that's coming forward I, I feel like there's going to be great passion and part of it will, the catalyst will be um, the isolation that people have had. It's like once they can be in the presence of other people, I think it's going to generate an either, even stronger emotion. So for you, Scorpio, I definitely feel you have very, you know, very strong energy coming through of a relationship. So, um, I love you very much, and I am so happy to have you with me today, and I'll be back in a week for a seasonal tarot check.